Hi, this is Karthik Rangappa and welcome to another Varsity video. In this video, we will talk about analyzing a debt mutual fund. Debt funds attract a lot of investors, mainly driven by the perception that debt funds are risk-free. Debt funds are considered a safe haven for your capital and it's considered an alternate to bank deposit. But this is not true. I'm not trying to discourage you from investing in a debt fund. All I'm trying to say here is that debt fund too are risky assets. Debt funds can be volatile and can cause permanent damage to your capital. And this is the first thing you need to internalize before investing in a debt fund. For the sake of this discussion, I've picked Mirai Asset Short Term Fund. Again, please don't consider this as a recommendation. The idea is to lay down a template using which you can analyze any debt fund of your choice. Much of the debt fund analysis will be centered around the risk of the fund and the portfolio of the fund. So this will be very different compared to the way we analyzed an equity mutual fund. The fund that we are looking at is relatively new. It debuted around 2018, so there is not many data points to track, but that's okay. As the name of the fund indicates, this is a short-term fund, meaning the fund will invest in bonds which have short-term maturities, maybe in the range of one to three years. Do recollect, you can always check SEBI circular to understand the definition of a fund. Anyway, have a look at the average maturity graph of this fund. I've sourced this from the AMC's website itself. The average maturity of the fund is roughly around two years, which means the fund is susceptible to default risk, credit risk, interest rate risk, and change in perception of interest rate risk. Now, in case any of these risks get triggered, then the fall in the NAV can be very steep, and it'll take a long time for you to recover from the losses. And the only way you can deal with the fall in NAV is by ensuring that you stay invested in these funds for long. How long, you may ask? There are many different theories, but I believe that the minimum time you need to give a debt fund, it should be equal to at least the average maturity of the fund. So in this case, if I were to invest in this fund, I would look at investing for two and a half to three years and nothing lesser than that. You should be super clear about the investment tenure before investing in a debt fund. While analyzing an equity mutual fund, we did not pay much attention to the portfolio of the fund. But in case of debt funds, much of our analysis revolves around the portfolio of the fund. Here is a quick look at the portfolio allocation of this particular fund. This is available on the AMC's website. The portfolio is a mix of different papers. Roughly 58% is invested in corporate bonds, 20% in government bonds, 9% in certificate of deposits, 6.5% in state government bonds, and the rest in commercial papers. The fund has 60% allocation to corporate bonds, which means it's highly susceptible to both credit and default risk. Now, how do we figure if the fund manager is managing this risk well? Well, to do that, you need to check for the following. The diversification within the corporate bonds and the exposure to companies. There should be no high exposure to a single corporate entity. If it does, then that draws a red flag. Also, you need to check the credit rating of all the papers held by the fund. Now, when you dig further into the corporate bond section of this portfolio, you'll realize that the fund is fairly well diversified across multiple papers, and there is no single large exposure to a particular entity. And here is the rating profile of the portfolio itself. Nearly 74% of the portfolio is split between AAA bonds and bonds issued by the government, also called the sovereign bonds. While this may look good in the first glance, we also need to check how this fund is positioned compared to the rest in the category. And to do this, I look at third-party website like Morningstar and see the bonds breakdown. I look at this data point only to get a general idea of risk. Note, I'm recording this video in Jan 2023, and the table you see here uses data points from November and December 2022. So it's a bit dated. But from this, we can get a glimpse into the fund manager's thought process. You see, the fund manager is packing in a lot more AA bonds compared to the rest in the category. The next step when analyzing a debt mutual fund is to look at the effective maturity and the modified duration of the fund. The effective maturity for this fund is 1.69, whereas it's 1.84 for the rest in the category. This gives you a sense of the tenure of the bonds. Short tenure implies that the fund manager is averse to taking in credit risk. The modified duration, basically the sensitivity of the bonds price with respect to change in interest rate risk, is also lesser for this fund compared to the rest in the category. Next, we need to look at another metric called the yield to maturity or the YTM. YTM is the total returns expected based on the assumption that the bond is held to maturity and the cash flow from the coupons are plowed back into the bond. Now, a debt fund is basically a collection of bonds. 
So the YTM that you see here for a debt fund is at an aggregate level. Intuition says higher the YTM, the better it is. And this is correct. But you can also look at YTM as an indicator of how much risk the fund manager is taking. For example, if the category average YTM is 6%, whereas this particular fund's YTM is 8%, then it implies that the fund manager is taking additional risk to chase returns. Ideally, the fund's YTM should be lesser than the category's YTM. Personally, I'm even okay with lesser YTM compared to the category. Here is how this particular fund scores on the YTM check. As you can see, the YTM of this fund is 7.27, whereas the category's average is 7.37. And in my opinion, this is good. Now, if you're thinking why I'm not looking at standard stuff like fund ranking, capture ratios, rolling returns, etc., well, that's because these things doesn't matter for a debt fund. Finally, would I invest in this fund? Well, maybe I would shop around to see if there are better alternatives. The fact that the fund manager has packed so many more AA bonds compared to the rest of the category makes me slightly uncomfortable. Remember, chasing returns is not my objective when I invest in a debt fund. I would look at preserving my capital. Lastly, one more parameter to look at when analyzing the risk of a debt fund. It's called the liquidity risk. I've discussed liquidity risk in detail in Varsity. I would encourage you to read this chapter to understand what liquidity risk is and how it can impact a debt fund. I hope you found this video useful. And in the next video, we will discuss about constructing a mutual fund portfolio. Do comment and let me know if you have any queries. I'll see you guys soon.